Right, we're going to add a few sounds now before we make any more copies of that alien. Um, and we could have sounds in a few different places, maybe shooting the cannon. That could be a good place to put a little noise as we press the spacebar. Um, so on Sprite 2, that's the, the one that's got this pressing the spacebar function on it there. If we go to sounds, um, before you can use any sound in Scratch, you have to import the sound. So if you click on the import button, and again, you've got the folder of sound effects which you can download from the game on page. So I've got mine saved in here somewhere. There we go. And there's all sorts of noises in there that were taken from the original Space Invaders game. We've got shoot, which is what I'm, lo I'm looking for. Press OK. And now we've loaded that in. If we go to the pink sound blocks, uh, you've got the option to play sound shoot there, which is the top block. So as I press the space key, I'm also going to drop that sound in there. And let's just test that out. And that's working now quite nicely. Uh, other noises I could put in there for our alien, maybe touching Sprite 1 at the end there. This this could go in two places, actually, this noise. It could go uh, on the cannon when it gets the message game over. We could play a noise at that point. So again, you're going to need to import that sound first. Um, we've got explosion, that might work quite nicely. And same thing, get the sound block from the top there, and it'll play it and then it'll uh, make him switch costumes. Just a quick point about the sound blocks, there are two that are very similar. One says play sound explosion and the, the one below it says play sound until it's done. Um, the top block lets an, a noise play and other things can then be happening at the same time so the, the other blocks in your script will happen straight away while the noise is going on. The one below it, the one that says until done at the end, uh, has to finish playing the whole sound before the next thing in your list of instructions will happen. Now for a short noise you probably won't see much difference between those blocks but if you had a longer piece of sound or a piece of music then uh, nothing would happen until that piece of music had finished playing so often the top one is the best one to use. But it, I suppose it depends on the purpose of what you're creating there. But let's try, um, we've got the cannon noise in there, anything else we want to add? As they touch the edge of the screen, we could use some of these noises, just so we've got some little sound effects as they're bouncing. So I'm going to put Fast Invader number one, this one's called. So as it touches the edge of the screen, I'm going to make, a, make him make a little noise. And that will try that out now. And maybe a noise as the cannon hits the alien could be good, good as well. So in the alien itself, we're saying it's the if you're touching Sprite 2 part there. I could use the explosion noise again. You have to be careful with sound, not to put too much in some, sometimes, because a bit of an overload on sound can be sometimes irritating to the game player themselves if it's making too much noise. But we'll test that out, see what it's like. We can always take it out again if we don't like it. Okay, that works quite well. Okay, so the next job is to now duplicate um, that alien that we've created, because at the moment we've only got one, obviously. So I'm going to right click him and choose duplicate and it makes an exact copy of him. I'm just going to make those two aliens both appear. And the only thing you should need to change from Sprite 3, which is my first alien there, to Sprite 4 is their starting position. Because if you leave that the same, it will look as if there's only one alien because they'll both be starting in the same place. So if we put them back on that top row, they're somewhere around there. It's the distance apart you need to kind of decide. So I think about that far apart is about right. And it's just the X number you're going to need to change. So if you leave the Y number the same, you can be sure that they'll be on this exactly the same row as each other. So that says about minus 145 for the X number. That's the only bit I'm going to change there. 
So minus 135 in there. Leave 156 for the y uh, coordinate and they move together then. And even as they bounce down the screen, they should both do that. And then it's just a case of repeating that, duplicating it for the next alien. And if you sort of space them out evenly, just keep repeating that process until you fill up that row of aliens. You'll probably fit about six or maybe seven aliens across the top of the screen there um, before um, that first part of the game's finished. Yeah. So Sprite 5 I'm going to change this time. And it's uh, about minus 75 for his X position. Okay, just to show you things finished now, I've finished duplicating my aliens. I've created um, six of those. And I also decided to take out uh, the, the noise that was played as the aliens hit the edge of the screen. I felt it was a little bit too much once we had six of them whizzing around the screen. But let's just show you how that looks as it's finished. So we've got all the aliens in a row. The fire, I've got the cannon noise. The noises as well. and everything works great. Next thing we're going to put in is a scoring system which will let the game end um, and s it end with you completing it as a victory. So a scoring system in Scratch has to be done as a variable block which are the dark orange blocks. As you click on variables there won't be any blocks in the list there, but if you click on make a variable and name it score and press OK, some blocks will then appear. And we're going to say uh, to the computer, first of all, when the game begins, so at the top of this stack, and I'm doing this on my first alien sprite here, I want to always have the score on zero at the start of the game. So set score to zero is what I've put in there. And then after that, a little further down, as uh, the alien touches sprite number two, and that's my cannon, remember, it's gonna, after it's played the noise and hidden, it's gonna change the score by one. So that's gonna give one point to my score, which you can see has appeared. I've put it right up in the top corner of the screen there. Um, that'll give me one point whenever I, that alien touches the, the cannon. So shooting an alien gives you a point. Now that second bit, change score by one, is something I am gonna need to add to each of my aliens because I've done that after I've duplicated them. You don't need to put the reset score to zero on every alien, because just having it on one will be enough to make sure that works. So I've got my six aliens in here. They all need change score by one. So shooting any of them gets gives you a point. And I'll just give that a test now. So press the flag now. And... And see two points are going up. Three points. Six points is the most I can get there. Now at the moment, six is the maximum, and we, we may take things further and add more aliens later, but if we imagine for now that's the end of my game, um, we want something to happen when we get to six. So on your cannon sprites, if we start a new little bit of script that says when the flag is clicked uh, forever put an if block inside that the operator blocks are very useful there's lots of kind of maths functions in here you've got add, take away, divide and multiply and um, more than, less than and equal to numbers the ability to pick a random number and things like that and it's the equal block I'm going to drop into the little hexagon space there if you go to variables, you can grab this top little bit that says just score on its own, and that should click into one of the spaces in the equals box. So I'm saying to my cannon now, uh, when the game is started, if the score equals something, I can make something happen. So six being the maximum, if I put six in there, when the score equals six, I can make the game stop and, um, and make a congratulations message appear or a piece of music could play or something like that if you imported some music. So if I go to looks and we'll just use a speech bubble for now, we'll keep it really simple. And we'll say congratulations you 
you save the galaxy. And we'll have that on screen for four seconds. And then um, I'll go back to control. Put the stop all block again inside that if block. So when the game started, if the score ever gets to six, it'll see that message and then stop all. And we'll just try that out. Our message should be there for four seconds and then everything stopped at that point. If you'd like to still add more to your game, I would recommend you look at the version 4 Space Invaders file from the game on page, uh, which has extra features like extra aliens, falling bombs from the aliens, uh, title screen, and also extra bits of music as well. So that will really help you take your game on further. But that's all for now.